Right here on the table is a build that is going to be pretty crazy because I'm doing something I haven't done before and that is sort of mixing high-end parts with budget parts and also going to be using this as my main rig for a few months. So we just came off the back of the Xeon versus the 2.8 cores in 2018 and there wasn't a whole lot of difference. But what I wanna do is I wanna take the Threadripper 2950X for a good test drive with all my usual workflow and today we've got here on the table a build that kind of integrates a bit of budget into that, especially since we're using ASRock's X399 Phantom Gaming 6, which is specifically designed for the 16 and 12 core Threadripper chips and not the 24 core and 32 cores that can use a lot more power. So they've cut down on the VRM a little bit since a lot of people uh, will be going, I think, for those 16 core 32 thread uh, Threadripper chips instead of the bigger variants, since I think they're more practical for most people and we're also going to be coupling this with uh, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 FlareX memory. This is the CL14 uh, stuff, the 3200 megahertz, as well as an RX 590 uh, for the Gravis card. Because for video editing, I find I don't need a real high-end card. I find the mid-range graphics cards are more than capable of handling my workflow. But we've also got in this build a 10 terabyte Iron Wolf Pro for backup. And then for the main drive for the NVMe boot and also scratch drive, we're using a Corsair MP510. Some other cool components we're using in this build is Corsair's newest Spec 6 case. Has a tempered glass side panel, has a fan included at the front and a fan at the rear. Also supports 280 mil rads. So we will be using the H115i Platinum and mounting that up the top. Uh, and then testing as well motherboard and cpu temperatures in this case versus an open air scenario and the last component in this build is going to be a little bit controversial i can already see some people getting triggered in the comments but i'm going to be using a mid-range power supply this is the cx 750m because i'm going to be testing this uh, with this uh, cpu overclocked and the gravis card as well to see if we can juice around 600 watts plus uh, from the power supply itself and uh, see if this holds up over time as my main editing rig. Uh, because I've heard a lot of people in the past say that you shouldn't be using these power supplies, you should be going for something more higher end, like the RMX or the AX series or other brands as well, Superflower, Seasonic, EVGA. Uh, but for me personally, I wanna run this through the gauntlet and see if it will hold up. Plus it's got some really neat black cables included, so I won't have to use any cable extensions to get a pretty neat looking build. But with all that aside, let's build this beast right here and put it through its paces. And yes, that is a little tank on top of the case because I think like this build's going to be a work tank. So we're coming to a little bit of trouble in Paradise Min build, and that is this case is not really gonna support the uh, 280 mil rad with its fans up the top here without uh, hitting this uh, heat sink right here. So you can see here, even one fan sort of struggles as well. So I'm guessing the uh, 280 mil at the top is out of the question, but we're gonna try and mount it to the front of the case.
So now the build is complete. We are installing Windows right now and it is looking uh, pretty clean, like pretty subtle. There's not too much bling going on. There's a bit of bling coming from the fans at the front here and also the Corsair H115i Platinum. Other than that, pretty stealthy look and it's also really quiet. Of course, as soon as I've installed Windows, I'm gonna be doing a bit of overclocking and then testing the temperatures within this case because we've got a fan up here uh, ventilating as well as this one at the rear ventilating. And then we've got these two at the front being intake. So hopefully this is good enough to cool the CPU also in regards to the cost of this build, if you're gonna go buy this off the shelves right now, it costs around about 2,690 USD. Uh, and then in Australia around about $3,722 uh, using all the components I've used. And uh, I mean, honestly, for the price, it may seem expensive, but this is a 16 core 32 threaded beast with 32 gigs of DDR4 memory, CL14 uh, stuff. It's also got a 10 terabyte hard drive, one terabyte NVMe and it's ready to rock and roll. So here's the next step in the progress of setting up this new PC. Here's my old desktop, and you can just see the amount of files on the actual desktop itself. And this is pretty much like a week's work for me, so it just fills up so quickly, and then I'll clean it all up, uh, keep all the important footage. Uh, but in this case, I'm actually backing up data to the NAS now, and then from the NAS, I can just copy it across to the PC itself. So. This little NAS here, it saves so much time. It's really good, really handy having this thing in the Tech Yeah Studio. Anyway, while all the files are copying across, we're gonna boot this thing up and start giving it a bit of an overclock and tune. Here's the final product now on the bench and it is really good. I'm impressed with this build so far. I've already been editing out some footage in Adobe Premiere Pro. No hiccups whatsoever. I even played some Dota 2 at 4K and the RX 590 handled that absolutely fine. Though keep in mind Dota 2 is a pretty easy to play game. Uh, though it's the game that I do play in my spare time. I do like to play uh, turbo mode quite a lot and it's actually quite enjoyable. And as for the temperatures inside the build, the CPU only went up uh, two degrees over an open air test bed setup with the same ambient temperatures. Uh, so that was really good to see. And also another thing was, since the power supply is not as good as the AX1500 on the test bench, uh, it was uh, using 10 more watts. So the temperatures aren't being affected really at all, uh, but looking at the X399 Phantom Gaming 6's VRM, that actually saw a temperature drop. So it is getting some airflow going over that VRM now, and that enabled it to get about 10 degrees less than when it was on the open air test bench. So, so far with this build, I'm really impressed. It's super easy to build in, but another benefit as well is it's really quiet. Uh, even on load, the, the noise only went up to like 48 decibels. And in terms of idle, I'm standing right next to this build and it's just whisper quiet. The front of the case features an RGB strip as well with different modes, different speeds, and you can change different colors. However, there's no option to switch it off completely. So when I've got this on my desk, 
and these RGB lights are facing me, they can get a little bit annoying. So I would just like to switch them off completely. And so to do that, you just unplug the RGB controller itself. Anyway, in terms of this build versus the Xeon counterpart right next to it, I won't really know until I've used it for a little while. Then I'll be able to test all the nooks and crannies and compare them against each other. And I will be reporting back in a couple of months what it's been like to edit videos and just use this as my main desktop versus the uh, Xeon 8 core. But one thing I like to do with this hardware is take it for a proper test drive. And I think a lot of reviews out there now just get the CPU, do the benchmarks and then show the graphs. As of late, I've really been enjoying trying out different architectures and different CPUs and seeing what their strengths and weaknesses are. And yes, when it comes to doing my work, I do use an overclocked workstation. I have been doing so for the last couple of years without any hiccups whatsoever. When it comes to Premiere Pro, I just like to auto save every two minutes because I don't think the overclocks are the problem when it comes to Premiere Pro. Uh, the software itself, as we've reported in the past, is the biggest issue where it'll just bug out with some weird bug, especially for sound transitions, for example. If you accidentally hit that slider, Premiere Pro will just crash on you. So an overclocked workstation in 2018 and going into 2019 is seriously worth your consideration. Also in relation to the CX750, nothing's uh, cut out yet. Everything's been super smooth. So the power supply is looking like it's doing a decent job. As we mentioned before, it's not as efficient as the AX1500, but that is a titanium rated power supply, which does have a hefty price tag. So I will report back and uh, if this power supply holds up with this whole build, then honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. I think a lot of people underestimate actually how much power they need in a build and tend to go super over the top when it comes to buying a power supply. I mean, that's not a bad thing, especially since you can always keep using that power supply, especially if it's got good components. But me personally, I'm gonna take this mid-range power supply and use it and uh, see how it holds up with an overclocked 16 core system. Though lastly, in relation to the Spec 6 itself, it's a solid case, it looks really nice, especially if you're into that enclosed front off design. Of course, I do prefer the Air 540. There's not one case that has come out yet that has uh, sort of surpassed it in terms of looks, features, and also airflow. I mean, the Air 540 really does go well on uh, bringing you better temperatures than you'd otherwise get on an ambient desk setup. The one thing I will critique about this case itself is the top mounting for the radiators. I did not have enough room uh, whatsoever to mount the 280 mil rad at the top with the fans included. Uh, just mounting fans up the top is okay. You will just clear the motherboard. Uh, but if you wanna mount a radiator, then you're definitely gonna have to mount it at the front. And speaking of airflow with this case, if you're gonna get this, I'd uh, definitely reorientate the front fan to the top. Uh, so then you've got two exhaust fans and then get an additional two fans or do what I've done here, and that is mount your radiator at the front and have those fans bringing air into the case. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna be now taking this build, putting it back on the desk and getting back to editing videos. Uh, but also a big difference already is that I do miss Shadow Play. It's a very convenient uh, app to have on your desktop where you just have one hotkey to record your desktop. But an easy way to get around this with the RX 590 is I'm now using OBS Studio and then I turn on notifications in the bottom right corner of the screen and then I can hotkey just like I would with Shadow Play and I can now record a desktop and also gameplay footage at 4K. And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to pop that like button and also stay tuned because I've got a worst products of 2018 as well as best products of 2018 dropping on the channel. And we've got the Bitfenix Enso Mesh where they've redesigned the front panel of the case to allow for better airflow. So I'm gonna be stuffing in some seriously hot hardware all pun intended, and seeing how well that thing can cool it. What? What was that? You want some tech? Yes, loving. Well, of course. I mean, you're a Xeon, and you're in an Air 540. <laughs> I'm going to hear this request ASAP.